it's helping tell what story you're trying to tell. Like it's a character in your story because of how stylized it is. What's up everybody? Today we're talking about these beautiful lenses right here, the DZO Pavo Anamorphics. I do want to mention a few things first. Number one, DZO did send me these lenses to review, but they're not paying me anything. They don't get to see this video before it's published. It is 100% my thoughts. This isn't gonna be like a super technical review. We're not gonna be pixel peeping. We're not gonna be like looking at all of the super technical aspects because that's not what I really care about with lenses. Plus, there's a bunch of other channels that do that type of content better. So basically, I'm gonna be talking about my experience using these lenses, my overall thoughts about these lenses, and just what I think about the image and how I use anamorphics and how I approach lenses in general. So that's, yeah, that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So really quick, the physical lens is phenomenal. Like the, the build quality is really great. They're pretty heavy, especially this uh, 100 mil. If you've ever used the DZO Vespids, I guess the quality would be similar to that, but these are just like much bigger. Everything, the gears are super solid. The markings on them, you know, very clear, very, you know, very intuitive, all of that. Everything's really great. The only downside to the actual like physical, you know, the physical lens is this silver paint or whatever they use to cover the outside. Just by like feeling the lens and using it, I feel like it's gonna scratch over time. Not a huge deal, but worth, worth mentioning. I was sent the 28, the 55, and the 100 mil. It's a two times anamorphic lens. Came as a PL mount, but it also in the kit, um, it comes with the EF. Uh, mount that you can switch you just unscrew the back so the EF, EF mount was great because That's what I used Comes with an amazing case the case is just super high quality. I love the the precise foam cutouts. That's great I think that's pretty that should be standard. I have the Blackmagic pocket 4k with the speed booster the Metabones speed booster and I could not use these lenses with that just because when I switched it to EF, the element that protrudes out of the back slightly would not fit on with the speed booster, so just keep that in mind. This set of the 28, the 55, the 100 costs about $15,000 US. So that comes out to, if you're gonna buy them individually, I think it's about $5,500 US, which we'll get into that in a little bit. I think that's a little steep for what these lenses are, but they're still in that budget range you know, for anamorphics. So obviously a lot cheaper than like the Atlas Orions. I don't think they really even compete with the Orions. These would probably compete more with the Atlas Mercuries. I have not used those, um, but that's probably the competition to these. All right, so now let, let's talk about the look, okay? They, you know, that's the most important thing. That's, that's why you're here. That's what drew me to these lenses because they are very unique. They have a ton of character to them, but because they are so stylized, it's going to limit what projects they are being used on, at least from my perspective and what I would choose for a project. These would not be my like go-to lens even anamorphic lens for like every project just because they are so stylized. So it's like a pro and a con that you just need to be aware of. Like a lens like this, I view as like, it's helping tell what story you're trying to tell. Like it's a character in your story because of how stylized it is. And because of that, that's probably why I wouldn't purchase these, but I 100% would rent these for the right project. So obviously the super quick answer, do they look good? 
100% yes they do. Like, I love the look. Something else to keep in mind, these are not the sharpest lenses, but most anamorphics aren't known to be like for sharpness, nothing like super clinical as far as the sharpness goes, but I was just a little surprised of like how soft they were. Um, so just like, you know, if you're gonna use this for like a like a short dock or something, like I wouldn't use the this lens for like the interview or something like that, just because of like how soft it is. On one hand, like I really love the uniqueness of this lens, and I leaned into that specifically for this specific shoot. Very stylized shoot. There was gonna be a lot of editing and post to be out of focus, to have like this glass effect as you can see here on the screen. So there is a lot of that, like for, for like a super stylized thing, like a music video or this was more like a fashion style type of a shoot. So like these characteristics played into that because we were doing some weird trippy stuff in post. And so I felt like it was like a perfect pairing because of the weirdness of this lens and i use weirdness like in a good way um like it just has a lot of vibe to it and like i really i really dig that the other shoot that i use these lenses for is an easter video for for my church and i thought like the style it was very kind of like very slow very like product style in like no people no faces anything like that so i thought like this lens really helped that. We wanted some flares, we wanted some uniqueness to really make the flare pronounced. And so I think anamorphics were the right call for this project. And these just added that little, you know, that style just, you know, I thought was really great. I really enjoyed the footage. I enjoyed editing it. I enjoyed uh, working with the footage. There were a few shots in this project. I also used the DZO uh, Cata Zoom. I think it's the 35 to 70. I think it's the, the lens that was paired with this and it paired pretty decently, obviously not perfectly, but the reason we used that lens is we needed some really, really close macro shots and the diopter we had didn't fit the diameter of this. And so we just, instead of getting another diopter, used it on that. And I feel like it matched pretty well to the rest of the project. Obviously it didn't have a lot of that characteristic, but when I'm gonna go in for a macro shot, like super tight anyway, I probably don't want that much like weird bokeh and uh, character. Because we're going macro, I kind of wanted certain elements super sharp. So I thought it paired really nice. You go wide, you're a little soft, Got some cool bokeh. And then when you go in tight for the macro, I thought it paired really nice. So I think the problem with anamorphics right now is there's a lot of offerings that are coming out that have just come out um, in this like budget category. And it's crazy to say that like a $5,500 lens is a budget lens. There's a ton of hype around anamorphic and people are just using anamorphic for everything. I don't think that's great. I don't love that trend. I don't love the trend of just like getting on bandwagons when it's when it when we're talking about lenses because lenses are such a key part of your story. When we're just like, oh there's I can now afford to rent these really cool anamorphics and so I'm just gonna like use it and like make it work. That's not a good trend. I don't think that'll make you a better filmmaker. I don't think that makes you a better storyteller. I think that just you're riding a trend and you're riding a wave and you know that's that's not really what I'm about as a DP, as a director and what this channel is really about is kind of just like to help you guys tell better stories. To like show gear that I've used, that I like, that have helped me tell better stories. Really like really consider choosing the right lenses for the right projects. And I think most of the time, anamorphics probably are not the right choice, but that's just my opinion. I'd love to have dialogue in the in the comments about that. I'm not a huge fan of just anamorphics in general, but the one thing that I loved about these is because they don't over flare. I think the problem with most anamorphics is that like super crazy flare that's just super pronounced. And like if you're, you know, doing styles like John Wick or very sci-fi or you know, all that kind of stuff, then yeah, lean into that, you know, because it's, it's cool. It plays into the vibe. It plays into the story of those films. But I think for most of the time, the anamorphic flair is just too much. That's what I love about these is because it's really subtle. 
I actually found it like really difficult to get these lenses to flare. Um, I did find that the 28 mil did flare more for whatever reason. And obviously if you're gonna shine directly into, you know, I saw, you know, a test with these exact lenses, somebody's like shining a flashlight directly into it, but it's like, okay, that's not real. Generally not point my lens directly into a light unless it's like headlights or something very practical in the scene. So if you're trying to catch flares like from the side where something like, you know, a vintage lens or like, a, you know, a Helios 44 or something that can not look directly into the light and still catch a, a beautiful flare, these don't really do that. So um, I found it really hard to kind of just like catch that flare, which I really digged. Okay. I, I really loved that. There was one shot, like as you see here, like where we did point the light directly in because, you know, speaking of Easter and like the story of Jesus and the resurrection, all of that kind of just like, you know, bright lights. I thought it really fit the story. So we did it for that one shot, but just overall catching a flare, I just found kind of difficult, but I think it's a good thing. I did want to quickly run through like my process of choosing lenses for a project. So like everything on my channel, this is my perspective. Okay. This is how I go about choosing lenses. This is my method. This is my experience because every lens I'm going to mention below, I've personally used these lenses. So I know like strengths, weaknesses, the look, I think you should, you should get your hands on as many lenses as you can rent lenses, borrow lenses, the lenses that you actually purchase should be the core of like the stuff that you do the most. That's why I think most people probably shouldn't buy anamorphics unless you're like super into that like sci-fi look, you're into doing mostly short films features that would fit that vibe. Um, but for most of us, I don't think that's what we're doing. First off, like what's the purpose? What's the vibe of the project? What's the story about? Those are the first questions I ask. And then like, what's the budget? If it's more commercial, more clinical, and I have a smaller budget, I'm gonna probably go with like the DZO Vespids. I have a lot of experience with those. They're really sharp, but they're not like overly clinical and boring. Um, I did a comparison with these to my uh, Canon FDs, and I think I preferred the Vespids if I'm going for a really like more commercial look, but they're not like overly commercial. Now, something I do want to try that I have not yet is the Nisi Athenas. Those just look really great. Um, those are more on the clinical side, but so for a more commercial look, I think those would be amazing. So Nisi, if you're watching this, please send me a set. I would love that. If I have a little more budget, um, I'm going to go with the Sigma Cines, Sigma Art lenses that are converted to Cines with gears and all of that kind of stuff. Those are amazing lenses. I love that. An even bigger budget, Probably the Tokina Vista Primes, incredible lenses, but the heaviest lenses I personally have ever used. They're insane, but a beautiful lens. And then if basically I had unlimited budget, I would use the, the Zeiss Supremes. Probably my favorite lens I've ever used. Like the sharpness of this lens is just unfreaking real. It's just incredible. So that's, but those are very expensive, but incredible lenses. Now, if I'm going for something documentary style, which is most of what I do, less clinical, go to the set that I own. And this is why I bought this set because I do this the most and it's my set of Canon FDs. For being a vintage lens set, they're just still so sharp, but have so much character. Like I just, I just love these lenses. I also think the DZO Vespids are a great option for dock work. The DZO Kata Zooms, those are great. I think they look very similar to the Vespids. I just don't like zooms. That's just my style. I like to shoot with primes and I have a whole like list of reasons for that. So may, if that's like a video you want me to talk about of like why I choose primes over zooms for the majority of the time, just let me know. And that could be something I make in the future. But, you know, I think, you know, if you're into zooms and, you know, depending on the shoot, if you need zoom for just like super fast flexibility, then I think those DZO Kata or Kata, Kata I don't know, whatever, whatever that is, uh, those zooms, they're, they're a great option. And then obviously my Helios 44-2, just incredible. I, yeah, it's just a great lens. Everybody should have that lens because it's super cheap and it's incredibly beautiful. Now, a project that is like really creative, like a music video or something like that, just where it's, you know, you need a lot of vibe. 
then that's when I'm going anamorphic. And just like for my style, the most of the work that I do, I'm not just doing that a ton. So that's why I don't own any anamorphics. You know, I'm not in the narrative space. I don't have a desire to be in the narrative space. I'm not really into short films. It's not really my thing. My need for anamorphics is just not very big. Because the pavos are just so interesting, when I am gonna do like a very vibey shoot, yeah, these are at the top of the list of what I would choose, 100%. So to wrap up, definitely love the Pavos and I would highly recommend you checking them out, rent them, use them for a project or two. Understand the limitations that these guys have. One of those limitations that I have not mentioned yet is they are big, okay? They're not as big as like the Atlas Orions and you know, most anamorphics are really big. So these are probably on the smaller side for anamorphics. But I would say if you're like looking at these or any of these more budget anamorphics, you probably haven't used anamorphics a whole ton. So just keep that in mind. If you're coming from smaller lenses, you, you're going to need to understand just how big something like this is if you're going to be using gimbals if you're going to be using certain stabilizers or just even handheld you're going to feel this a whole lot more like this 100 mil compared to any of the vespids i would say is like twice the weight twice the size don't know you know actual weights to give that but that's just like from feeling it and using it that's what I would say. So if you're gonna, if you're planning on renting this for a music video and you're just gonna throw, like, you think that you're gonna throw this 100 mil, like on just like a Ronin, like a Ronin S or whatever, it's not gonna happen. Um, you might get it balanced, but you're gonna fight it and you're gonna hate it. I used the Ursa G2 with these Pavos on the, on the Movi and it worked great. I hope this was helpful. I hope that you got a little insight into like how I choose lenses, why I choose lenses. I think that's so important that you have a why for the lenses that you're using for your projects. Hope you enjoyed the footage. Hopefully it was helpful to help you decide if you're going to use these lenses. Yeah. And that's all I have. It's good to be back. I know I took a few months break from uploading because uh, me and my family moved, moved from South Carolina to Indiana. So huge move around the holidays uh it was just a whole lot i'm excited for 2024 just a lot of great stuff coming up so yeah that's all i got love you guys peace